What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. In this video, I wish I had some good news for you, but unfortunately, disaster has struck my fish room again. Well, it hasn't happened in quite a long time, but disaster has struck the fish room. This video is, um, the, a lot of the footage I'm gonna be showing you uh, was taken primarily on my cell phone, just because I, you know, when disaster strikes, you're, you're not really quick to, to go grab your full frame camera and your mics and go shoot. Your, your main focus is uh, solving the problem. And well, I couldn't save them. I tried, but I couldn't. I did everything I could. So let me break it down for you. Let me show you around the, uh, the, the fish room first. 125 is empty. I'm in the middle of being taken apart right now. Hold on, let's turn off this light. Okay, you got your big beautiful bass in here. You got the arowana. Uh, Bicers in the back corner over there, and then you have my beautiful baby rays down below. Glass is dirty, nothing else, um, but thriving. Everyone's doing great, but there's a fish missing. The fish that's missing is my Timensis peacock bass. Yeah, this footage was shot on my phone, and I guess I'll just kind of walk you through it and what transpired, what happened, what I noticed, um, and um, how I tried to treat it. And um, to tell you that I failed. And I think as fish keepers, we're so quick to show all of our wins, but we're not quick to show our losses. And I say this a lot, and I'll continue to say it. Um, every YouTuber, content creator, fish keeper, Whoever you watch, whoever your hero is, they lose fish too. It is what it is. Sometimes things happen. Depending on the fish that you keep, if you keep nano fish, you may not even be able to spot the fish that go missing or die or have issues. When you keep big fish, like me, monster, predatory fish, you can sometimes have issues. Biggest one, I would say, over aggressive cichlids, like peacock bass, is aggression towards each other. Um, scrapping it out constantly for tank boss, figuring out who is tank boss. That seems to be the thing with peacock bass. Um, quite regularly, they would fight and get into it. Everyone's good. These two won't go at it. Uh, the Oscar goes at it with them from time to time, but other than that, the is good. They're no longer attacking the arowana, which sucks because I got rid of my black um, over that, and he was supposed to go too, but now they're not bugging him at all, so I don't know what I'm gonna do with him anymore, but no one's bugging the other fish here. No one's bugging the bicher, the, my rays, or anything like that. But the biggest battle was my big Azul and my Temensis. Always going at it, always scrapping. Temensis would be tank boss for about a month or two, then it would go back to the Azul. Prior to that, the Orinoco was always tank boss of this aquarium. And I know that we talk about, you know, suitable homes for peacock bass and monster fish. And, and we, you've got to remember something. If they were in a 50,000 gallon pond, aggression and fighting amongst cichlids still happens. These peas would have still been battling. The, it would have kept going on. Whoever's tank boss is tank boss. And sometimes they're challenged and challenged again and challenged again. So let me show you the footage. Again, it's taken on my phone and then I'll come back to you guys at the end and or maybe in between and just give you maybe a detailed summary as to what happened. I've battled swim bladder before and I've won. I've also battled swim bladder before and I've lost. In this case, again, I lost. But let me show you what I did and how my Timensis um, got hurt. And don't forget to comment after the video. Let me know what you think about the video, of course. And, you know, maybe some tips and tricks that you would have done um, that are different. Again, I've tried different methods and you'll see all the methods I tried. Unfortunately, I didn't film everything just because again, even on my phone, I put my phone down. I'm the only one filming. I'm only one person. I could set the tripod up, but the angle didn't look proper. And I, to be honest, I, I really don't care. Yeah, I'm a YouTuber, but I'm a hobbyist. I'm a fish keeper first and foremost. And uh, well, anyways, check out the footage and let me know. So my peacock bass have been fighting these last few days. Nothing 
overly unusual. Peacock Bass will fight for Tank Boss dominance to see who's the strongest alpha in the tank. And it's always a run between my Azul, my large one on the left, and my Temensis, which is in the center. And they've been fighting so much to the point where I didn't, I thought I'd have to separate one of them. And it was most likely going to be that big Azul. But it's going to get weird in a moment here. You can see the chemistry is just off in the tank. Completely off. All the fish aren't acting normal. And boom. Just as I suspected, I think I have a swim bladder problem. As a matter of fact, I know so at this point. You can see the tail fin up in the air. His head down. Stressed out. Not acting normal. I was on a live stream earlier that ne that day. And... I heard them crashing around. I'd look over to the left and I'd see the him and my Azul just going at it. So much the people in my life could hear it and go, what's going on over there? So I have to get him out of here at this point. And it's not getting any better. Minutes go by and this is how I find him. So I quickly realized I have a 125 gallon aquarium that I emptied out um, earlier that day or the day before. And there was no more fish in there. Although I wanted to move that to a saltwater tank ASAP, I knew he needs help and he needs to get out of that aquarium ASAP. But sometimes it can be just a little too late. So here's what I do. I load up the 125 with water, just enough of height just to cover the fish and keep them in the water. You don't want too much pressure in there when you're dealing with a swim bladder issue. Um, you want them to try to stay as upright as possible. And, well, that's what I'm doing. So I'm filling it up with water. And, again, minutes go by. He's not getting better. Time's ticking. I got to get a net. So I run. I grab my net. I immediately pull him out. He gives me zero fight. He's hurting. He knows he's in trouble. My plan is I throw him in the 125-gallon aquarium. I have the water full just enough to cover his body and relieve some of that pressure. My method of treatment is Epsom salt bath treatments for 30 minutes minimum, two times a day, and peeled peas. Feeding them peeled peas is typically what I've used in the past that has worked. However, it's a pain in the butt. And Epsom salts can work as well. They work on fish just like they do with humans. So the next day goes by and... The peeled pea method isn't working. He's not responding well to the Epsom salt bath treatments, the peeled peas. He goes upright, but then he just flips himself over again and again and again. So at this point, he's not responding to treatment whatsoever. He just keeps flipping himself back over. We're three days into treatment. Now we're day four, as you can see here. And he's just not getting better. To the point where I have to, unfortunately, put some food in his stomach to try to keep him alive. Um, I do force feed him. He eats. But this is that evening. He's just down and out. Nothing's working for him anymore. The treatment isn't working. Nothing's working. So it's at this point that I've decided I'm going to put him down. Now the easiest way to euthanize a fish and the most humane way is with clove oil. Clove oil, a tote, a bucket of water, whatever you may have. Take the fish out and let him sit in there for about an hour and give him a heavy dosage of the clove oil. They'll essentially just fall asleep and never wake up. Um, unfortunately, I wish I could have saved him, but these were moments before he passed away and he was done. So now that you saw the footage, you know what happened. I tried with peeled peas, force feeding. I tried the raw garlic method. Um, Epsom salt baths twice a day, 30 minutes minimum. Um, I fasted him. I did everything I could. I couldn't save him. And that doesn't make me a bad fish keeper, and I don't think that at all. But what I, what I would like to say is, is that it happens. I tried. I did my best. Um, and it is what it is. Sometimes it just it doesn't work out. You ever have that one fish that dies and you never know why? He just dies. You come out to your fish room one morning, you're having a great time, and then your, your, fish, your fish is just dead? Well, that's what happens. It sucks. 
but at the end of the day, it's a part of the hobby. We never truly know why sometimes, and in this case, I do know why. For days on end, they were fighting. It is what it is. They were fighting. They were peacock bass. They were going at it. Him, uh, my Tementsis and my Big Azul. But I just didn't want to see him suffer anymore, so I did um, euthanize him. A great way to euthanize fish humanely is uh, with clove oil. That is probably, from my understanding, it seems to be the most humane way to euthanize a fish. It's definitely good to have on hand, and um, whether you're putting them to sleep and doing an operation on them or using clove oil just to put them out um, for the long winter, definitely great to have, definitely great to have. So. Anyways, everybody, I did what I could. What's next for this aquarium? I don't know. I don't know. I know my rays aren't going anywhere. I don't think my peas are going to go anywhere. I don't know anymore if he's going to go anywhere. He's definitely not going anywhere, I don't think. You know, my bicer's not going anywhere in the back corner. This is a nice tank. This is a nice setup. Um, but, you know, I think about changing it up all the time but we'll see what happens. I'm excited to put a 12 foot aquarium in here because that is the plan, is to put a 12 foot long aquarium in the fish room. That's a plywood tank. So putting a 12 foot long plywood tank in there is gonna be super awesome. I'm excited to get started on it and get rocking with it. However, there will be some changes that need to be made, meaning you know, I have to move some tanks around because obviously that whole area is gonna be filled up with one massive plywood aquarium. So. I definitely got to make some moves and see what's happening, how I can maybe make a racking system. Although I don't really care for racks, um, you know, I want to have as I, I want to have as many tanks as I possibly can. So maybe a racking system is best for the one side. Maybe take the tool bench out of there, even though I want it to be still a functional, semi-functional garage uh, shared with fish garage. But yeah, you know, I I want to say I hope you like this video but it's not really the best video to like, but it's, I just want to document my hobby with everybody. I want everyone to see my wins. I want everyone to see my losses. I think that's very important, um, especially for new fish keepers watching um, or even the advanced fish keepers watching that are afraid to show your failures and the big YouTubers out there that may somehow come across this video and go through failures, but they don't post them. We all go through it. Don't worry about it. Post it. It is what it is. Take care, everybody. Until the next video. Like and subscribe to, to our channel. Like and subscribe to our channel. Comment below. What did you think about this video? Ring the bell.